Tejasvina Vaditamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 May the Divine Being look over us lovingly as a mother and father. May the Divine Being support and nourish us as a mother and father. May we have the strength and skill to study together the art of spirituality. May no misunderstandings arise amongst us. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us and to all beloved beings everywhere. And so this evening we return to Mother as the mother of all, mother of the universe, and all of these subcategories. Before we start, any thoughts or questions about anything that you've been thinking about this past week that, uh, that remained unresolved or just that you'd like to comment on about mother? Anything at all? I have one comment, Brother Shankara. Yes, dear. It's about Girish Ghosh, the Bohemian devotee of Ramakrishna. He said, the master gave shelter to a horrible sinner like me. If I had known that there was such a large dustbin to dump all my sins in, I would have enjoyed more pleasures in my life. I think that was really, really, it tickled me all over. That was very- it, 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 that, that's, that's that completely honest and sincere Girish. <laughs> as, as, as you know, uh, probably know, uh, the master said, oh, you are one of Shiva's demons. Yeah, it's really nice. One of Shiva's demons. He was forgiven for all his sins in a, such a nice way. So, well, it wasn't even a question of forgiveness, I think. It's, it was just a question of the master taking the karmic consequences, consequences. Um, so that Girish could be, could be freed because the master came to liberate us all. Yes, and Girish changed himself, he transformed. That's the greatest yeah. thing, he transformed. He, he would have said the master changed him because he gave the master his power of attorney. Okay. And the master, the master was the one that changed him. Changed him, that's wonderful. Thank you, Brother Shankar. That's Thank all. you, Haima. Anything yeah. else from anyone? Okay. The great teachers of the world do not compromise truth. Even an avatar cannot satisfy everyone since each person is different. This, this Swami could have used the word unique. Each person is unique. Sometimes a great teacher's actions are misunderstood because people judge according to their own viewpoints. Once a fallen woman came to Udbodhan house and fell at the mother's feet. Holy Mother embraced her and said, come to me, my daughter. Now you have realized what sin is. You are repentant. I shall initiate you with a mantra. Offer yourself at the feet of the master. Don't be afraid. Now, I'm going to read that again. Because we, I don't think there are any fallen women am among us, you know, or fallen people in the sense that this woman is being spoken of. 
and mother's grace and mother's mercy and mother's love extended to her without any qualification. So when she says to her, don't be afraid, I think the instruction is to us all, don't be afraid. Once a fallen woman came to Udboden house and fell at the mother's feet. Holy mother embraced her and said, come to me, my daughter. Now you have realized what sin is. You are repentant. I shall initiate you with the mantra. Offer yourself at the feet of the master. Don't be afraid. Some aristocratic women from Bhagbazar, inclu including Krishna Bhavani, Balaram's wife, heard that the mother had given shelter to a woman of questionable character. So they decided to stay away. Krishna Bhavani told this to Golapma, and she reported it to Holy Mother. She remarked, those who have taken refuge in me will come here. What can I do if someone's coming to me stops others coming? Those who have taken refuge in me will come here. What can I do if someone's coming to me stops others coming? Later, Krishna Bhavani came to the mother and apologized for her wrong judgment. Swami Shamananda came to Calcutta regularly from Belramat to shop. If the tide was high, he would return straight away to Belramat by boat with the groceries. Otherwise, he would come to Udboden House bathe and then have lunch once he arrived at two o'clock when everyone had finished lunch irritated golap ma said he does not inform us in advance that he will come for lunch it would be more convenient for us and for him if he would let us know in, in let us know in the morning golap ma as we all know had a sharp tongue and, an, and a short fuse. Now listen to what the mother says. The mother overheard Golap Ma's remark and came out of her room. She said, you see, our family is growing day by day. Every day we will have to make food for a couple of extra people. What to do? So the mother did, wasn't troubled in the least. Our family is growing day by day. So we'll have to make food for a couple of extra people. What to do? Golap Ma said. Kishdu, is that right? Shidu, Shidu, yeah. Shamananda. Shudu. Sham hmm? I think it's probably Shudu, that's what I'm thinking. Shudu, okay. Shudu, Shamananda comes often but he does not tell us when he will stay for lunch. Let it be, Holy Mother responded. Please serve him lunch soon. Already it is late. My son has come after doing many errands. You have too much affection for him. It seems he is your, it's, <laughs> you have too much affection for him. It seems he is your father-in-law. Yes, you are right, Holy Mother agreed. The boys are like my venerable father-in-law. They are my own. Now, what's the message here? Why is Swami Chaitanya including this incident in this great book? It's to let us know not to be shy with the mother, not to be not to be formal, not to be 
it isn't that we are to be thoughtless, but when circumstances are not what the etiquette books say might be the optimum thing to be or do, what does mother say? The boys are like my venerable father-in-law. They are my own. And of course, that means all of us. She's said this as we've gone through this chapter. We're all included in her embrace and in, in her shelter. Swami Madhavananda, Swami Madhavananda re recalled it was July and raining continuously. I carried some vegetables from Kualpura Ashrama to Jairambati. When the mother saw me, she said, you have come very good. No one has come here for some days. There is a shortage of groceries. You stay here today and do some shopping for us. In the afternoon, I went to the Halda Pukur, Haldar Pukur Market. Hmm? Haldi Pukur, Haldi. Haldi Pukur Market to buy kerosene, flour, sugar, ghee, rock candy, and some other things. The weight of all the items was about 82 pounds. The shopkeeper told me, it will be difficult for you to carry such a heavy load. Let me call a porter for you. I was thinking that the mother did not ask me to engage a porter, so I said, I don't need a porter. I shall be able to carry it. Please lift the basket onto my head. After carrying that basket for a while, I felt the weight of it and had an ache in my head. It was raining. I held the umbrella over the basket with one hand and the basket with the other. The road was slippery and I was walking carefully. I was determined to walk the entire path. Along the way, there was a slope for crossing. There was a slope for crossing the bullet, bullet cart. And when I crossed it, I felt that the entire load became light. Mm, let's read that again. Along the way, there was a slope for crossing the bullock cart. And when I crossed it, I felt that the entire load became light. I could not figure out what had happened, and I stopped for a minute. Then, without any difficulty, I reached the mother's house. When I entered the house, I saw the mother pacing back and forth on her veranda. Her face was red, and eyes were bulging. She was asking herself, why did I not ask him to hire a porter? When I put down the basket, she said, why did you not hire a porter? You should not carry such a heavy load. Madhavananda realized that during his journey, Holy Mother had relieved him by carrying the weight herself. Pacing, eyes bulging. Now again, why is this incident included? I think it shows us our, her divine power. Show not just that, Haima, just that that mother will intervene in our behalf when uh, with our good intentions I we see. get ourselves into difficulty. I see that. Thank you. Madhavananda got himself into difficulty by by saying, Oh, mother didn't ask me to hire a porter. I'll carry it myself. And it was too much for him. The shopkeeper was right. And so, but it was with good intentions that he made this decision. So he was doing his best to fulfill his good intentions and mother 
relieved him by carrying the weight herself. But you're right, it is. it also, Haima, is to show that the mother's power will reach out to us. Sure. Her divine power is there. Anything else before we move on? I think it was more to see that the devotees don't suffer. Our mm -hmm. devotees, when they are trouble, mother will come and save them. Yes. When we are suffering, particularly, particularly when we are suffering, when we are um, trying to fulfill our good intentions, and it's beyond us, Mother will come to our rescue. Mm. Anything else? Thank you, Sean. You're absolutely right. She doesn't want us to suffer. Particularly when it's not that we've been stupid or willful or, or some thing that you could accuse yourself of. No, you were trying to do your best. So the next subhead is Holy Mother's care for her children. During World War I, people suffered from a terrible financial crisis and scarcity of goods. Poor villagers had no money even to buy clothes. One morning, Haridas Bairagi, an old minstrel from Deshra, came to Jairambati. He used to make his living by playing his violin and singing devotional songs from door to door. He had sung the Agamani songs when Girish visited Holy Mother. The mother was very fond of this old minstrel. Now when she saw his pitiful condition, she gave him some oil to rub on his rough skin. The mother heard his sad stories while preparing a beetle roll for him. For those of you who don't know what a beetle roll is, it's a, it's a confection. It, uh, it's a, a kind of nut, a beetle nut, wrapped in a leaf with some some something else to help with the uh, digestion, and it's it's uh, quite tasty. She listened to his sad stories while preparing a beetle roll for him, and she fed him, and then. And she then fed him prasad, in other words, food that had been offered to the master. In the course of conversation, Haridas told the mother that he had no spare cloth. That morning after her bath, the mother had spread a wet cloth in the sun that she had used only a couple of times. After hearing his story, she picked up that cloth and gave it to Haridas. Overwhelmed, the old man wept as he touched the mother's gift to his head and left. Very touching story. Akshay Sen, a householder devotee of the master and author of Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna Punti, for those of you who don't uh, know Sri Ramakrishna Punti, it's in Bengali, it's in verse, uh, and uh, a beautiful translation of it has been prepared, and it's in English. Uh, you can get that from the Ramakrishna uh, uh, bookstores in India, or you can buy it from uh, the uh, from Vedanta.com. Vedanta.com is the the um, bookselling unit at uh, the Hollywood uh, Center, uh, Sri Ramakrishna Punti. There are many, many stories in it that some of them seem fanciful, some of them, but with all, they're inspiring. And many of those stories were left out of Swami Sardananda's The Great Master or 
as published by Chaitananda, the, the master's divine play, because he couldn't triangulate the story. He couldn't find three people who could independently verify uh, that that's what actually happened. And there are many wonderful and miraculous stories in this Ramakrishna Punti. So um, for those of you who don't read Bengali um, fluently, because it is in verse, which means it's more um, allegorical and um, uh, idiomatic than, than uh, formal Bengali. Uh, so it's in, it's in verse form, poetic form. So uh, the trans, the English translation, as I said, is very nice, very nice. Um, so this the 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 man who wrote it was Akshay Sen. Um, he used to live in. Hmm, say it for me, please. Uh, in Apur. Minapur. Manapur. Manapur. Manapur, which is some miles from Jairambati. Because of his old age, he could not visit the mother, but from far, but from time to time, he sent some buffalo ghee and other things for her personal use. Once a middle-aged woman brought Akshay's gifts to Holy Mother. She arrived before noon and had her bath and lunch at the mother's house. Seeing that she was exhausted, the mother asked her to rest and stay overnight. A bed was made for her on the veranda outside the mother's room. The woman was a little feverish and achy, so she fell fast asleep. During the night, she unconsciously soiled her bed. During the night, she unconsciously soiled her bed. The mother got up very early in the morning, as usual. When she saw the situation, she realized that the woman might be abused if others in the household found out about it. So mother gently woke her up. She handed her a package of puffed rice and molasses and, ten and, and then tenderly told her, my child, start your journey now so that you can reach home before the sun gets hot. The woman bowed down to the mother and left. The mother quickly took the soiled mat to the pond, washed it, and laid it upon the grass to dry. She also cleaned the veranda and mopped the mud floor with cow dung paste. No one at that time knew what had happened. Again, why does Chaitanya include these stories? The subhead was Holy Mother's care for her children. So Holy Mother didn't scold her, make her feel bad in any way. She simply woke her up gave her some provisions for her journey and said, get going before the sun gets too hot and also before these other people are up and find out about this and make life difficult for you. The sweetness, the consideration, not only is it a, an indication of the mother's love for us, but it is a potent instruction for us as to how to behave in such a situation, to behave lovingly, gently, kindly, thoughtfully. All those things mother was modeling for us, not consciously, not saying, I'm going to show them now. No, no, it was just her nature. But in being herself, she was a wonderful model for us. No one at the time knew what had happened. Mother didn't say a word to anyone. 
At the time of our story, Jairambati was truly a remote village, accessible only by foot or bullock cart. In the autumn, the road was soft and muddy from the monsoon rains, so bullock carts could not reach the village. A couple from Garbeta. Garbeta, a couple from Garbeta, nearly 20 miles from Jairambati, had heard about Holy Mother and wanted to receive her grace. One afternoon, they started their journey by bullock cart with their four children. The next morning, they reached Jibta, a couple of miles south of Jairambati, and then walked to the mother's house. Everyone was exhausted, especially the baby, who was suffering from malaria. The place and people were completely unknown to them. Utterly puzzled, they just stood at the mother's door. As soon as the mother heard of their arrival, she called them inside the house and received them cordially. They all bowed down to her and the magic of her affection greatly reassured them. The mother arranged for milk and medicine for the baby. The couple, the couple bathed in Banerjee's pond and the mother initiated them after performing her daily worship. That's what was meant by they, they wanted to have the mother's grace. That's what was indicated by that phrase, that they wanted to be initiated. Again, notice how mother just took care of everything. Took care of everything. Not only is it an illustration for us of what we can expect from the mother, if we particularly if we trust her and, and take refuge in her, which is, those are very potent words, take refuge in her. But they are, again, instruction to us. When somebody shows up unexpectedly and is needy, how should we behave? Any comments or questions before we go on? We're about to start another subhead. That shows that the mother came down to the level of the average man and not remain high, you know, herself. Well, that's exactly right, John. And, and that is, uh, that is exactly it. And that's why people were so confused by her. She just seemed like an ordinary village woman. And yet, <laughs> she did not behave like an ordinary village woman in, in these circumstances that were described to us. And she never did. I mean, if you read her life, if you, if you want to read just about every detail that could be verified of mother's life, read Swami Gambirananda's book. Swami Gambirananda became a president of the Ramakrishna order was a very senior monk, disciple, a direct disciple, I don't remember which. And he, he assembled a book that was as exhaustive and comprehensive about the mother as, as, could, as he could manage. Swami Gambirananda's biography of, of the mother. I don't remember the title, but if you just Google Holy Mother Gambirananda, the title will come right up. Anything else from anyone? Oh, I thought they were going on to another subhead. This is the this story continues. 
After lunch, they wanted to resume their journey to Burdwan, 34 miles from Jairambati. With tearful eyes, they bowed down to the mother. She reluctantly bade them farewell and gazed at them as long as they were visible. She was so sad at their departure that she did not go to take her noon rest, but instead remained seated on her veranda, deeply thinking of this family. Now you can imagine how this affected their journey. <laughs> how she didn't go to sleep and leave them to their devices, leave them to their journey. She seated herself on her veranda, deeply thinking of this family. Meanwhile, a woman devotee found a towel that belonged to them lying in the sun and took it to the mother, which increased her sadness, observing the mother lamenting, what on earth? Something popped up. Oh, goodness me. It's something from the Kindle Cloud Reader. Uh, I have no idea what this is about, folks. Excuse me. It just suddenly was there. And it says I need to create an account. I have an Amazon account. I don't. Let me just see if I can pull it up. No, it's... Uh, ah! Uh, excuse me. I, I, this is, this is a complete shock to me. I have no idea what, what this is about. I think this is probably a scam. Oh, yes, Brother Shankara, there are so many scams going on now. I think this is probably a scam. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Dear, I don't know what to do because when I when I tried to to go and sign into the Kindle Cloud Reader, you can't close it. It has nothing to do with Amazon. Yeah, they're just trying to trick you. But I have no idea what to do. And I can't see well enough to make any sense out of it. Let me let me cut shut Firefox down and start over and see if that works. Pardon your pardon the interruption, dears. Does anyone have the book open? Yes, yes, we all do have, I think, most of us. Well, uh, somebody who has the book open, just start reading. Just start reading uh, and while I fumble around here and see what I can do. Okay. You want me to go ahead and read, Brother Shankara? Uh, if you okay. can, dear, yes, please. Yes. Observing the mother lamenting, Brahmachari Gopesh, later Swami Saradishananda. It just comes back. It's back. Uh, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to talk with Cindy about how to deal with this. I have no idea what this is about. Ah. And uh, so uh, you just go ahead, Haima, and I, I'll interrupt you when I. OK, I, please, I, please do, Brother Shankara. Observing the mother lamenting, Brahmachari Gopesh, late Swami Saradeshananda, took the towel and ran to catch up with the, with the couple. They were then near Banerjee's pond at the border of the village. Naturally, they were, they were embarrassed. They expressed their gratitude to him and continued their walk to Deshra, where their bullock cart was waiting for them. Having the news from Gopesh, Holy Mother was pleased. But soon after the woman's wet sari was found hanging in the sun near Punyapukur, the mother loudly lamented, 
ah, oh, my child will not find her sari tomorrow. She will remember that she left it in the mother's house. Another woman made a rude comment. How can she manage herself with such a regiment of children? The mother said in a choked voice, it's natural to make mistakes. It was hard for my child to leave this place. She could not stay here even for a night, not did she get a chance to talk to me fully. Gopesh was ready to go, but Nalini said, enough, you will not have to go again. They have gone quite a distance now. But Gopesh took the sari and said to mother, they have not gone too far. I shall be back soon. Please, the mother's pleased, the mother said, my son, the sun is hot. You had better take an umbrella. In fact, the family had almost reached their bullock cart on the main road. Seeing Gopesh running towards them with the sari in hand, the devotees were ashamed and apologized to him. They said, truly there was no necessity for your taking so much trouble to bring the sari to us. But Gopesh explained that the mother was worried and was sorry for their plight. And to make the mother happy, he carried the sari. This brief meeting with Holy Mother left a deep impression in their minds. They had experienced the genuine affection of a real mother. And notice how no detail escaped her attention. She didn't, she didn't just gloss over things, sweep it under the corner of the carpet, so to speak. Right. Uh, and but <laughs> and when Gopesh said he'd go, she took note also that the sun was hot and he should take an umbrella. So she was ever caring for every little detail. Again, this is an example of her grace and, uh, and, and, and an example of how, how we should think about such instances. As, as instances like this arise in our lives. What did she say about this woman? She said, oh, everyone makes mistakes. And furthermore, the woman was so busy with her four children that she didn't even have a chance to talk with me. So she was ever compassionate. Very true. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Rajan, later Swami Vidyananda, was the full-time cook for Kolpara Ashrama and did all sorts of other tasks for the center. He was simple, austere, and very devoted to the mother. At one time, he was not getting along with the head Swami, and moreover, his health was failing due to his heavy workload and the lack of nourishing food at the ashram. He came to the mother at Jairambati and told her his problem. He asked permission to move to Varanasi. The mother asked him to stay with her at Jairambati instead. Rajan agreed and joined Gopesh in looking after the activities of Holy Mother's household. Holy Mother always offered a glass of rock candy syrup to the master during the worship and then drank it as prasad. Thus, she broke her fast and distributed the other prasad to the monks and devotees. Now, every day after worship, the mother called Rajan to her room. She would sip a little of the rock candy syrup and then hand the glass to Rajan to drink. <laughs> One day the mother privately told Gopesh, my son, Rajan's head has become overheated from cooking over the fire in the ashram. Despite his ill health, he has worked hard. Moreover, he had a difficult time adjusting in Kolpara 
and wanted to go to Varanasi. I asked him to stay with me to give his brain some rest. Mm. Later, when his health improves, he should return to Kolpara Ashrama and resume his work there. To that end, every morning I share with him that offered syrup so that his system will calm down. Gopesh was moved by the mother's love and affection towards her monastic disciple. A couple of months later, Rajan regained his health and returned to Kolpara. After Holy Mother's passing away, Rajan worked very hard to build the mother's temple in Jairambati. He was the first caretaker of the temple, but he passed away a year after it was established. Sometime in January 1917. Let's just stop there just for a moment, just sure. to consider this story. Exactly. Sure. Again, the, the mother, instead of scolding the head of Kualpur, what she had done in the past about how stingy he was with these boys and, and didn't give them proper food and worked them so hard. Um, uh, but instead of scolding him again, she simply kept Rajan with her. And not only gave him her gave him her unqualified unconditional grace but did what she could to nurse him back to health mm -hmm. including sharing this very special drink that was a great favorite of sri ramakrishna's that rock candy syrup uh, drink um he said you won't want to touch treacle after you've uh, or any any other lesser thing after you've had this and apparently it has some beneficial effect uh, and, yeah. and uh, she said cooling the brain his brain had become overheated so no detail escapes her exactly and uh, if you read the chandi the hymns in the chandi you'll see that this same story is told of the mother there, that nothing escapes her attention. Everything is taken into account and that she loves all her children, uh, the, 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 the humans, the, the sages and, and the, uh, other human beings, as well as the devas and the asuras and the daichas those of uh, selfish nature so, all right please read on dear okay sometime in january 1917 four of holy mother's disciples came to visit her in jairambati from maiman singh now in bangladesh as she had not been well for some time, they intended to stay for only a couple of days, only a couple of days. The mother was happy to see them. During their stay in Jairambati, they visited Kamarpukur on their way back. They were caught in a rainstorm. The groups later became ill with malarial fever. fever. The mother was very anxious. The guest room was small and several people were staying there. Furthermore, there was no bathroom facility for the patient. The mother arranged a special diet and quinine medicine for the sick man. When the fever did not abate after three days, the devotees discussed the matter and decided to move the patient to Kolpara Ashrama, where there was sufficient room and also a government hospital nearby. The mother remained silent. Vijananda hired a palanquin that afternoon and escorted the patient and his companions to Kolpara. 
the mother repeated Durga, Durga, and bade them farewell. Exhausted, she went to bed with a heavy heart. Her attendant, Gopesh, sat on the veranda so no one would disturb her rest. Suddenly, a thick cloud covered the sky and created darkness all around. Mm. Yeah. A thunderstorm began to blow with a terrible roar. Holy Mother awoke and came out of her room, crying out loudly, what will happen to my son? Her veil dropped on the ground and her hair was disheveled. She was completely oblivious of her surroundings. She rushed to the edge of the veranda. Looking up at the sky, she prayed with folded hands. Oh, master, please save my son. Save my son by all means, oh Lord. Observing her tearful eyes, Gopesh was dumbfounded. He consoled her saying, mother, don't worry. By this time, they have reached Dashra. Vijayananda is intelligent. He and the other three devotees are with him. Moreover, the palanquin carries are known to be obedient and faithful. Gopesh escorted the mother to her room. When Holy Mother entered, she stood in front of the master's picture, cried and prayed again and again. Oh, Master, please be gracious to me and save my child. Gopesh was speechless and overwhelmed by the mother's love for her devotees. Gradually, the sky became a little clearer. The rain stopped at midnight. The mother passed a restless night. The next morning, Vijananda returned and he informed the mother that the group had taken shelter in a home in Deshra during the thunderstorm. When the rain stopped, they took a lantern and continued to call for They had supper there and slept well. The patient and his companions were doing fine. Holy Mother was greatly relieved. Now, these days, with all of our modern conveniences and the fact that we get around by car and so on we really don't grasp what a fierce thunderstorm can do um also the roads were so muddy too in those days brother oh, yes there was no pavement there was no there was no roads or tar roads or anything no yes very rough roads, dirt roads, pretty much. When I was eight years old, yeah, uh, we were living in North Carolina. And my father was farming some land that he rented from a, a farmer. He was in the army, but he always wanted to grow things. He always loved to grow things. Mm -hmm. So one weekend, one Saturday, we were out at this farmer's place and a really fierce thunderstorm blew up. And so here I was, I'd been riding with my dad on the tractor and uh, he told me to get down into this. It was an open sided shed, tin roofed shed. And uh, so I, I did as I was told, got down and got into the middle of the shed. But I could see out on all sides. And this terrible storm blew up and it began to hail and first of all the the noise was fearsome of course a tin roof shed but more than that the lightning 
the lightning was striking all around. And at one point, the lightning hit a tree and the tree literally exploded. Yeah. It was maybe 40 or 50 yards from where I was. And I don't know if you uh, know, but lightning yes. is hotter than the surface of the sun. Definitely. And it uh, literally boiled the sap of that tree instantly and the tree exploded. I've never seen such a sight again in my life. Yeah. But this is how I relate to this story of these people and why mother's concern. This terrible, fierce thunderstorm, they're out there walking with a palanquin and you know, a, a malarial patient. And, uh, you know, so uh, this is, it's hard for us to take seriously anymore. You know, if it rains hard enough or it hails or something, we might have to stop our car. That's right. Uh, but we have such wonderful shelter. We have such wonderful automobiles that uh, protect us from these things. And, um, you know, but these people in, I think the year was said to be 1917. Um, you know, there was no such conveniences. And so you were very exposed indeed if you were out on an open road oh, yeah. uh, in one of these terrible storms. Because the lightning would strike all around. <laughs> Just yeah. terrible. Terrible. We have 10 minutes, Brother Shankar. Do you want others to comment or just do you want me to go ahead and read? Uh, hold on just a moment. Does anyone else want to say anything? Is there any comments or questions from anyone else? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sharjendra Nath Majmudar of Maiman Singh, of Maiman Singh belonged to an arist aristocratic family and worked for the royal family of Kuch Bihar. He was a disciple of the mother and many of his family members followed his lead and also took initiation from her. From his early life, he was accustomed to taking tea when he awoke in the morning. After initiation, he said to Holy Mother, Mother, I have a habit of taking tea as soon as I get up in the morning. It will not be possible for me to practice my sadhana without taking tea. What shall I do? The mother answered with a smile, my son, it's not a problem. You may take your tea or anything else before you practice japa and meditation. Wow. In Jairambati, Holy Mother served fruits, sweets, and puffed rice to the devotees for breakfast. She would eat puffed rice with green chili, and drink a glass of rock candy syrup. Once when Sharendra was visiting the mother, she served puff rice and molasses to him for breakfast. Sharendra said to her, mother, what have you given me? I don't eat this kind of food. The mother told him, my son, these are the things available here. Please eat, it will not do any harm to you. When I go to Kalakata, I shall feed you nice things. The monks in Kolpara worshipped in the shrine at 10 o'clock in the morning on empty stomachs. One day the mother told Vidyananda, you boys perform worship before eating anything. It makes the mind restless. If the stomach is calm, the mind remains calm. Please have your breakfast and then do the worship. Her advice was very practical. People normally walked barefoot in Jairambati, including Holy Mother's devotees from Kalakata, who considered it holy ground. Sometimes the village children carelessly scattered broken brick chips and small broken pieces of earthen vessels in Holy Mother's courtyard. Swami Sharadananda told this touching story. 
I remember this insignificant incident. The mother was a Jairambati. She was over 60 and not well. It was the dead of the night, about 1.30. My sleep broke and I saw a light in the courtyard from my room. Out of curiosity, I came out and saw someone doing something with the help of a kerosene lantern. I went down and saw the mother digging with a spud, spade and picking up broken pieces of earthen vessels and bricks and putting them in a basket. Dumbfounded, I asked, mother, what are you doing? Embarrassed, she replied, I'm cleaning this courtyard by picking up these broken chips. Why are you doing this? My, my son speaks softly, Other, why, otherwise others' sleep will be broken. Then she said in a low voice, you see my son, some children have come from Calcutta. They live in the city and don't have the habit of walking barefoot. Here people walk barefoot. Today someone's foot was, foot was cut. So I'm cleaning up these broken chips so that they will not get hurt. I said, mother, we can do this work. Why are you doing such a thing and giving up your sleep? Hmm. I know. Yes, my son, I know you can do it, but you are tired from doing so much work in the household the whole day. So you need sleep. I have no work. So when you went to sleep, I came to clean the courtyard. I said, all right. Now you give me the spade and I shall clean the courtyard. Mm -hmm. You go to your room and sleep. Mother said with a gentle tone, my son, I shall do it because I am the mother. <laughs> Many things for her children. I do very little for, for you all. My son, you go and sleep. I have almost finished. Only a little is left. I could not say anything more. Tears had trickled from my eyes. I thought, this is why she is the mother of all. Without sleep, she's not only cleaning the courtyard, she's also clearing the obstacles of her children from the path of her journey, and she will continue doing so. That's the end. We'll, we'll stop there. Yes. Yeah, it's almost uh, three minutes to seven o'clock. Beautiful story, Brother Shankar. Yes, beautiful story. It's so illustrative of the mother's so much. unending Her and detailed yes. awareness of everyone's vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. their their situation. She didn't condemn the children from Calcutta. Mm -hmm. She simply said they're not used to going barefoot, so they don't understand. What a, That's very true. what a mind, what a heart, what a love. Any other comments or questions from anyone? We have a few minutes. Please go ahead. And that's the way it used to be, Brother Shankara. The, so even, even now in some villages, there is still dirt roads. Yes, I know. They have to be cleaned and make sure the glass pieces are not there so people could walk. There are some people still walk with bare feet in okay. villages, very remote. Villages. But you know, Haima, I know that there are people, there are people present with us this evening. Yes. That have had experiences of the mother. Exactly. <clears throat> so if they choose to share. Sure. Uh, with us, that would be a that would be a, a loving kindness. <clears throat> Brother Shankara. Yes, dear. So much gratitude to Swami Chetanananda for uh, painstakingly gathering such um, uh, anecdotes and bringing it to us, and to to you, of course, for explaining so beautifully. Um, sometimes when I feel like I'm so far away from Holy Mother because of the, the difference in years and time, um, then I feel like actually I'm not that far because 
Hmm. Swami Brahmananda and Swami Prabhananda were <coughs> close to him and then you were close to Swami Prabhananda. So only removed by maybe about four <coughs> people. Well, not I only take... that, dear, but but she, she and the master are with us in their subtle bodies. They said they would stay until time to uh, in in their subtle bodies until time to take human form again in 2086 so though they may have left their physical bodies in 1886 and 2000 i mean uh, 1920 <clears throat> they certainly are not gone and this is what i mean there there are people among us, among our congregation, who've had experiences of the Buddha. And certainly Swami Prabhavananda did, and other people of the Hollywood congregation of, of my, uh, that I know. Anything else? Thank you, Swayam. That was very sweet and, and very appropriate. Yes, thank you to Chaitanya Ananda for assembling this remarkable book. Anything else from anyone? Questions, comments, shares? All right, we'll close. O oh, beloved mother, these stories awaken our hearts. These stories illumine our minds as to who you are and how you care for us. Let that sink deep within us. Let that sink deep within us so that we understand that we are in your care, that you are the mother of the universe. We are your children and we are in your care. And if we take refuge in you, as it says in the Chandi, those who take refuge in you verily become a refuge for others. And what does that mean? We begin to share your attributes. You, we begin to share your love and care and your outreach to, to others. We begin to be people who can be looked to for loving kindness and for assistance and just general sympathy and empathy. Those who take refuge in you, it says in the Chandi, verily become a refuge for others. And so we ask your grace that we understand this and that we do take refuge in you that we do accept your grace and accept what happens in our lives as your grace. We ask this in your sweet and holy name. Jai Shri Sharada Devi, Jai Shri Sharada Devi, Jai Shri Sharada Devi. May we be one with you in life, in love, and in spirit, Mother. Om Hari Om, Om Hari Om, Om Hari Om, Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Ji Ki Jai Durga Durga Durga. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you be cheerful. 
may you have peace of mind and may you go forward in the mother's loving and protective embrace. Any final thought from anyone? All right, dears. So delightful to be with you. So delightful to share this book. And I'll solve this problem about this business that popped up and says I have to create some account, which is nonsense because I already have an account. And so, Thank all you. right. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Good night. night. Thank you, Brother Shankar. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Hi, Good night, you. everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you.